السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Is my voice clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, I will continue, inshallah, the first sessions. And uh, before we start, I will check uh, for a question about the ratio of T4 to T3. Uh, actually, in the, fourth in the fourth edition of the Oxford Handbook, they mentioned that the thyroid secretes 20% of circulating T3. This is not mean that T4 represents 80% of the secretion of, thyroid, uh, of the thyroid gland. This represents 20% of the total daily requirement of T3 is secreted from the thyroid gland. And 80% of the T3 are converted from T4 to T3 in the peripheral tissue by the adenosine enzyme type 1 and type 2. Uh, and actually, you um, so the ratio of T4 to T3, as mentioned in a lot of text books and a lot of sources, is uh, 15 to 1. And actually, I, I will mention it. This is the source. The first one, this is the, from the Oxford Desk Reference uh, first edition. T4 and T3 are secreted in a ratio of about 15 to 1. And this is from William Endocrine uh, Endocrinology, the text book of endocrinology, the, the latest edition. The ratio of T4 to T3 in the human thyroglobin is 15 to 1. And this is demonstrated actually in the Greenspan basic and the clinical endocrinology, the, the latest edition, the 10th edition. They mentioned that. Uh, the total T4 secreted from the thyroid gland is about 100 nanomoles per day, and the thyroid gland secrete about 5 nanomoles per, per day T3. So if you convert this ratio, you will find that T4 to T3 will be 20 to 1. So in most references, the ratio of T4 to T3 is from 20 to 1, so 13 to 1. So the mid range of this ratio is 15 to 1. So in the exam, if they mention 15 to 1, this is the correct one. If they mention 20 to 1, this is also correct. Also, if they mention 13 to 1, this also is the correct. So you need to choose which one is available in the choice, not 5 to 1. Okay, is this clear? Yes, yes, clear. Uh, so, inshallah, uh, today uh, I, I will continue from uh, this one. I will continue part two. I have a question. Okay. Um, Dr. Chavan, um, I need to explain it uh, once again. I uh, will mention it from the green span rapidly. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, this, this number from the Oxford Handbook, uh, latest edition, fourth edition, they mentioned that the thyroid secretes 20% of circulating T3. This is 43, not 44. So the total daily requirement of T3 is secreted from the thyroid gland at 20%, and the 80% is uh, obtained from conversion of T4 to T3 by the adenosine enzyme in the peripheral tissue. Uh, So this is a very illustrative answer from the Greenish Bambok. A thyroid gland secrete per day, 100 nanomoles per day. Don't, don't forget that in another references, they mentioned that by microgram per deciliter. So you must convert it to nanomoles per liter. So the thyroid gland secrete 100 nanomoles per day T4. 
and at the same time secrete 5 nanomol per day T3. So the ratio of T4 to T3 secretion from the thyroid gland 100 to 5. So it represents a 20 to 1. In another sources it is 15 to 1 and in another sources it is 13 to 1. So it is the midway between 20 to 1 to 13 to 1. And don't forget that the thyroid gland secrete reverse T3 with a minimal uh, amount, less than 5 nanomol per liter. And uh, in, in, in actual, in the William textbook of endocrinology, they mentioned that the ratio of T4 to reverse T3 is 100 to 1. So don't forget this. Maybe uh, they uh, ask a question like this in the exam. So the ratio of T4 to T3, it is... 20 to 1 to 13 to 1 or 15 to 1 the the all are uh, uh, equivalent and t4 to re reverse t3 100 to 1 uh, i will go to uh, our uh, session today bar 2 Actually, Dr. Fathi, the voice is clear in most of uh, all. Uh, and don't forget that this is also, um, we are uh, within the first session of uh, my course. And in, uh, I will cover thyroid scan ultrasonography or U classification, which is very important and very essential in the uh, exam. Fine needle aspiration cytology and cyclification, classification, which also very important. Actually, in every exam, there are one or two questions about each item of this. And non thyroidal illness, which is also a very important in the exam. And actually, there are one question uh, about non thyroidal illness. Don't forget these tools and files and videos are not for, for redistribution, they are for personal use only because this is a paid course. Uh, also, I will mention that this is not academic presentation. This is an interactive presentation. So any question are welcome at any time. You can stop me and ask at any time. And scenarios need interactive discussions from all of you to get the benefits. And actually, a lot of information will be uh, repeated uh, in a lot of sessions. So uh, don't... Uh, uh, don't blame yourself if you forget some points and actually in the next sessions we will repeat it. Uh, Sent scan or scintigraphy, this is uh, an imaging modality for uh, thyroid and a lot of uh, endocrinological organs. Uh, this actually used to define area of hyper or hypofunctioning within the thyroid gland and actually is uh, needed for um, some of cases uh, to define the etiology of cytotoxicosis when we cannot define the etiology of the cytotoxicosis. For example, to distinguish between a Graves disease and cytoditis uh, or the Quervia cytoditis. In early stage of uh, cytoditis, the thyroid function tests the same as a Graves disease. The TSH will be low or suppressed with elevation of thyroid hormone. In this situation, we cannot uh, distinguish between cytoditis and the Graves disease. In some cases, actually, not in all cases, because if there is a Graves or Patobacy or Dermobacy or Acrobacy, this is a Graves disease, not thyroiditis. But in another scenarios, we cannot distinguish between the Graves disease and thyroiditis, except if we do TSH receptor antibody, for example, or thyroid scan or thyroid scintigraphy. And another uh, usage for CT scan to detect a retrosternal goiter and also for the units to detect ectopic thyroid tissue. So, synthesis scan permit localization of the site of accumulation of radio iodine or sodium per technique or, or, or a technetium, which gives information about the activity of the iodine mm -hmm. trapped by sodium iodide co transporter. Per, uh, technetium, it is intravenous. So, after intravenous per technetate, it is it have a short half life. Within 10 to 20 minutes, we take an image of the thyroid region. 
the percentage of uptake is usually in the range of 1.5 to 3.5. This is the normal uptake of the technician. Another uh, radio contrast material, which is oral radioactive iodine 123, this is uh, isotope for iodine, has a clinical useful because the half life of iodine 123 is. 13 hours and this is actually very important because in our exam they ask about the half-life of iodine so don't forget that this half-life of iodine one to three is 13 hours short half-life but the technician is about six hours so in iodine one to three half-life 13 hours and can be used in the routine diagnostic scan or whole body scan in differentiated thyroid carcinoma after one to two days with high quality image at low radiation dose another iodine isotope which is oral iodine 131 the half-life is eight hours this is very important is used for whole body scan in a case of differentiated thyroid carcinoma five to 10 days post therapeutic radioactive iodine ablation, but they provide lower quality of image and has a higher dose of radiation. So we have a three uh, material to do synth scan, technician, iodine 123, iodine 131. And half-life for three, uh, three uh, elements is very important. Usually, we use oral iodine 123 because it has high quality of the image and half-life is, is short and also low radiation dose so in our exam uh, uh, 2018 they asked two questions about the half-life they ask one question about the half-life of iodine 131 which is the correct answer is eight days and they ask about the half-life of gross hormone in the pituitary section, uh, which is 20 to 30 minutes. So in another exam, they may ask about the half-life of the technician or half-life of iodine 123. So I collect the half-life of a lot of uh, elements in the endocrine. The amiodarone half-life is 58. In iodine, as we mentioned, it technician, it technician six hours, gross hormone 20 to 30 minutes, the thyroxine seven days, the misimazole six to eight hours, the propyl thyroxine just one and a half hours, the cortisol 100 minutes, and dexamethasone 38 hours. So the, uh, this is a very important collection. And this is comparison between radioactive iodine 123 and the technician of course will have life as we mentioned 13 and 6 hours the advantage of the technician which is widely used maximum thyroid uptake within half an hour of administration can be used in a breastfeeding woman but after this continuous feeding for 24 hours this is uh, we can use technician in a short in very minimal conditions during the breastfeeding but Radioactive iodine is absolute contraindicated during the breastfeeding or during the pregnancy. A disadvantage of technician, technician is only trapped by the steroid without being organified. And of course, the technician, one of its uh, beneficial is uh, widely available and rapid scanning time. The scan may be altered by a lot of uh, material. The most important one is in, in high iodine foods and supplements such as kelp or seaweed seaweed so before doing centigraph or thyroid scan we must stop intake of high iodine foods also some of the drugs containing iodine such as amiodarone with a very prolonged half-life about 58 hours can affect thyroid scan also a radiographic contrast dye can be potentially interfere with this interpretation of the scan so both these three elements in your mind uh, of course we have uh, two types of thyroid uh, scintigraphy one is uh, radioactive iodine uptake and thyroid scan the difference is thyroid scan give an anatomical image like this but the radioactive iodine just a number radioactive iodine so radioactive iodine is for example 10 percent 
So a radioactive iodine, it is just a number. A thyroid scan, it is an anatomical imaging. To, differ to differentiate between toxic adenoma and grave disease, a radioactive iodine cannot differentiate between toxic adenoma and the grave disease because both of them, a radioactive iodine, will be whole. But a thyroid scan can differentiate between a toxic adenoma and the grave disease because it will give image like this. This is a toxic multinodular goiter, and this is for a grave disease diffuse uptake of the technetium or uh, radioactive iodine. So this is very important because in our exam, they give uh, an image like this. In our exam, uh, this image from our exam actually, and this is for a grave disease. So you need to differentiate. This is for a grave disease. This for toxic multinodular goiter. And this is the toxic adenoma. And this is low uptake. Low uptake means transient thyroiditis, uh, dequervious thyroiditis, factitious thyroiditis, any form of thyroiditis will uptake or will be low like this. So, a scan will appear diffuse enlargement of the thyroid gland like this for a grave disease will be low or absent uptake like this for thyroiditis, any cause of thyroiditis, postpartum thyroiditis, dequervious thyroiditis, silent thyroiditis, a toxic nodule like this, this is a toxic nodule, and the, if there is a cold nodule, we will find low uptake. Uh, for example, I think there is an image for cold nodule in the fine needle aspiration biopsy. A thyrotoxic cause factitia, depressed uptake like this, and the thyroid cancer, this is very important, and we will cover it in the uh, session of thyroid cancer. Uh, we will uh, do whole body scan by radioactive iodine isotope 131. Uptake by the tumor tissue requirement require adequate level of the TSH. So for follow-up of the patient with differentiated thyroid cancer, we need TSH is elevated. We can obtain this by stopping of T3 or T4. If the patient already in the T4, we, mu we must stop it before whole body scan by one month, three to four weeks, or stopping a T3 by 10 days, or by giving recombinant TSH, which is thyrogen. So in a, in a follow-up of the patient with differentiated thyroid cancer, and we need to do TG and anti-TG, or whole body scan, we must elevate the TSH to more than 30 uh, international unit per liter. How we obtain this level? The uh, expensive one, and this is available in the Europe and the USA, but uh, in most of our countries it is not available because it is very expensive. We can give recombinant TSH, which is thyrogen. We didn't uh, need to stop uh, thyroxine as a suppressive therapy. We just give thyrogen and do imaging study. And another modality, uh, which uh, with the risk of relapse of thyroid cancer by stopping of the thyroxine for three to five weeks before imaging study. And if the patient, and we can convert the patient from thyroxine to uh, T3, because T3 has a, a short half-life, and the stopping T3 replacement therapy, which is cytomel, 10 days before the scanning. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Khaled Wafiq went to stop altroxine and carbimazole. As we mentioned uh, since a few minutes, altroxine must be stopped uh, about three to five weeks before the scan. And the carbimazole need to be stopped before the scanning by three to seven days. Uh, also, Dr. Iman said why, uh, uh, Dr. Isra Moras, why it is considered as a disadvantage uh, just trapping, not organified. Uh, because uh, uh, here is, they mentioned that the technician is only trapped by the thyroid without being organified. In this situation, actually, it is uh, not very essential, but in some cases, uh, in the thyroid nodule, for example, if we do uh, technician scanning and thyroid nodule seems to 
to be uh, uh, warm in uh, technetium scanning. If we repeat this scanning by uh, iodine 123, it may be called dual identification biopsy because uh, uh, the most important in sensitive thyroid hormone is trapping and organification, both uh, types. So iodine is trapped and organified. Uh, by the thyroid gland, not tabled. Uh, and this is another very important image because in the exam they may be uh, mentioned some of them. This is a, a grave disease, but within it there is a coordinate dual. And in this situation, we need to do fine needle aspiration because this is a coordinate dual. And this is a Graves disease. This, 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 there is a, a homogeneous distribution of the uptake, either tissue or radioactive iodine. And this is a toxic multinodular goiter. Don't forget that this is different than the Graves disease. And this is a hot nodule. This is a, a toxic adenoma. And outside the nodule, there is low uptake. And in this situation, this is a, 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 a nodule. Uh, in the left side and in the right side, the separation of the remaining of the thyroid gland. And this here, th there is low uh, radioactive iodine uptake or uh, separation, and this is diagnostic for any cause of thyroiditis. Yes, batch uptake and diffuse uptake. So, this is a diffuse uptake and this is a batch uptake. Don't forget, this is a low uptake and this is a toxic adenoma. So this is a diffuse uptake and this is a batch uptake. A batch, a batch uptake in a hot nodule or toxic multinodular goit. In ultrasound scanning, this is a very essential in assessment of any thyroid uh, a gland pathology, but the most important in, in a thyroid nodule actually. It provide accurate indication of the thyroid size and if focal or diffuse thyroid pathology, an ultrasound is useful for differentiating cystic nodule from solid one, so later nodule from, from multinodular nodules, a change in size of the nodule over its time, and it is not routinely indicated in patient with a goiter because if we find that the patient uh, complain from diffuse thyroid pathology by palpation and there is a manifestation of a graves or pathology so this is a graves disease no need for doing thyroid sonography but if there is a thyroid nodule by palpation we must do thyroid ultrasonographic scanning to assess its size and the pattern of this thyroid nodule. In Hashimoto's thyroiditis and the Graves disease, the lymphocytic infiltration and damage to the tissue architecture result in variable decrease in the echogenicity. And the color Doppler is very important in two situations, actually, in the Graves disease, because increase in the inferior, uh, in the inferior thyroidal artery systolic pressure, and this is a very important increase the blood flow with the Graves disease. And also, the color Doppler, Doppler is very essential for differentiating of amiodarone disease because type 1 from type 2. And we will discuss it with the amiodarone. Uh, while in the case of the Hashimoto thyroiditis, of course, the vascularity may be either moderately increased or nearly completely absent, but this is the case mainly of the operator. So, a color Doppler and thyroid scan for differentiating from a Graves disease and Hashimoto thyroiditis is not accurate enough. A Dequervian thyroiditis is characterized by multiple ill-defined hypoechoic areas. And actually, in the exam, this, this slide is not, not very important except in increased blood flow in the Graves disease. When performed by experienced sonographer, it can be used to distinguish between benign and malignant disease. So we have a lot of uh, thyroid ultrasonographic uh, features that suggestive of benign lesion or suspicious of thyroid cancer or 
diagnostic of thyroid cancer. And actually, this is slide is very important because in every exam, they will, they will ask a question about suspicious features by thyroid ultrasonography. So you need to uh, remember this. Uh, and uh, we, we will discuss a lot of questions about this. Actually, a simple cyst, complete cyst, uh, cystic nodule is a benign nodule, which is a fluid collection within thin regular margin. This is a pure cystic nodule, and this is benign nodule. And another one, which is spongiform nodule, which is mostly cystic, more than 80% fluid, collide, which contain a comet tail sign, and also this is a benign feature. Once you see in your uh, sonographic report comet tail sign, this is a benign feature with regular margin devoid of vascular signals. The most important in the exam is suspicious for thyroid cancer. All of thyroid cancer are solid. Most of them are hypoechoic. Microcalcification is one of the most suspicious features in the exam. Once you see micro microcalcification, this is a suspicious feature for thyroid cancer. Regular margin, central vascularity, because peripheral vascularity is one of the benign features. Central vascularity is a suspicious feature. Taller than white is a suspicious feature in complete halo. So, a peripheral halo, complete peripheral halo is a benign feature, but incomplete halo is a suspicious feature. Extension beyond capsule, this is invasion sign. Suspicious, suspicious lymphadenopathy is a suspicious sign. So, let's enumerate the, 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 uh, repeat them, microcalcification, regular margin, central vascularity, taller than white, incomplete halo, invasion, suspicious lymph node. Calcification is a prominent feature of medullary thyroid carcinoma. So, in, in some exam, in the previous exam, they ask about the benign lesions. For example, complete cystic nodule. This is a benign nodule. Uh, as per Bridge Thyroid Association guidelines, a patient with a history of sudden onset of pain in a thyroid lump, this is a benign feature. Sudden onset of pain in a thyroid lump, this is represent, this referred non-urgently because this is a hemorrhage or a bleeding within a benign thyroid cyst. So this patient not need to refer urgently for uh, endocrine clinic. An ultrasonography is extremely sensitive and can be specific for diagnosis of thyroid cancer. If you see in the thyroid uh, sonor a suspicious feature and you do fine needle aspiration biopsy and uh, represent a benign uh, pattern, please think once and once again because thyroid ultrasonography is sensitive and a specific tool if done by an expert uh, sonographer. Elastography stiffness is uh, reported. Okay. We have 10 minutes and uh, and the program uh, turn off uh, Zoom and we uh, rejoin again. Elastography stiffness is reported to have a high sense of malignancy with negative prediction, predictive value. Radiologists should use a US classification, which is published by uh, British Thyroid Association. U1, which is normal, U2, which is benign, U3, intermediate, U4, suspicious, and U5 is malignant. And we will discuss it later. This is a very important slide, actually. This is a British Thyroid Association guidelines for the management of thyroid cancer, and they mentioned it classifies thyroid nodule into two five categories. U1, this is a benign normal thyroid gland, U1. So U1, 
This is a normal thyroid gland. No need for fine needle as a virgin biopsy. U2, this is a benign thyroid nodule. What does it mean? This means thyroid nodule with a peripheral halo, isoechoic, mild hyperechoic nodule, peripheral eggshell calcification. This is a benign feature. Peripheral vascularity. This is a benign feature. So don't forget that peripheral vascularity is a benign feature. The intranodular vascularity is a suspicious feature of malignancy. The peripheral egg shell calcification is a benign feature. Micro calcification is a malignant feature. Disrupted peripheral calcification is a suspicious feature. So this is a very important. So U1, no need for fine needle aspiration biopsy. U2, no need for fine needle aspiration biopsy in most cases. But for example, if you have U2, but the patient has a family risk of thyroid cancer, you must do fine needle aspiration biopsy. If you have U2 and the patient have a previous history of neck radiation, you must do fine needle aspiration biopsy. U3, U4, U5, you must do fine needle aspiration biopsy because suspicious of malignancy is high. So I will repeat it again. A suspicious feature of malignancy, a microcalcification, this is the strongest one, intranodular vascularity, a shape taller than white, a nodule is taller than white like this, for example, taller nodule than white, associated suspicious lymph node, yes, actually Dr. Khaled, uh, uh, my lecture in Cyro Alex 15, inshallah, after uh, three weeks about uh, different uh, uh, risk stratification, TIRAD versus American Thyroid Association versus U uh, classification in the next thyroalex, inshallah. And uh, we have uh, uh, one image for TIRAD in Oxford fourth edition. Uh, so the most important, for exam, is suspicious, suspicious feature, to which suspicious feature, microcalcification, intranodular vascularity, taller than wide, a tall of the thyroid needle taller than wider, associated suspicious lymph node, disturbed peripheral calcification, lobulated outline in our exam, they give a question and ask about the malignant feature, which is lobulated outline, a hypoechoic nodule, and hyperechoic nodule also is a risk feature, but not alone, because most of the thyroid nodules are solid. The benign feature, the isoechoic, peripheral halo, hyperechoic nodule, mild hyperechoic, the peripheral eggshell calcification, and peripheral vascularity. So, in our in the previous exam, they ask about about the most suggestive feature in thyroid ultrasonography for malignancy, the microcalcification. They mentioned, for example, the microcalcification and the peripheral halo, the macrocalcification. So the correct answer is microcalcification. The macrocalcification is not a malignant feature. So this is also a table from the British Thyroid Association guidelines published uh, 2014 by ultrasonographic feature indicative of the benign nodule. So a spongy form or honeycomb appearance. This is a benign feature, puricystic, Eggshell type calcification around the birth of the nodule because eggshell type calcification around the birth of the nodule with a broken calcified rim this is a malignant feature. But eggshell calcification alone is a benign feature. Eggshell calcification with a broken calcified rim this is a malignant feature, especially where there is extent extension beyond the calcified rim because they extra capsular invasion of the thyroid, which is feature of malignancy. The peripheral vascularity, this is a benign feature. The intranodular vascularity is a malignant feature. A regular border, microcalcification, taller than white, regular or speculated margins. This is another 
term used speculated margin or lipulated margin. So in uh, also in another exam in 2020, they ask about a sign of malignancy in the nodule cystic, microcystic, nodule greater than 1.5 centimeter, nodule taller than wider, hyperopaque. So in nodule taller than wider, this is a malignant feature. And this is a thyroid system uh, which is important, but actually I prefer a, a, a bridge thyroid association or American more than thyroid system. And this is actually in the exam is not very important, just according to some parameters, the composition, the cogenist shape and margin and the cogenic foci, we, we give each one some points and we calculate total points. And if the total points, for example, three this is a thyroid three four to six thyroid four seven points or more this is a thyroid five and each one thyroid one this is a benign no need for fine needle aspiration biopsy thyroid two no sus not suspicious no need for fine needle aspiration biopsy thyroid is three mildly suspicious of malignancy we do fine needle aspiration biopsy if the reduce more than 22.5 and thyroid four we need to do fine needle if the reduce more than 1.5 and thyroid 5 highly suspicious we do not find needle aspiration biopsy if the needle more than one centimeter this is a thyroid classification which is american college of radiology classification and actually this is a very important slide in the exam uh, and this is from the british thyroid association uh, in each one we suspect thyroid needle we do ultrason ultrasonography for, for the thyroid needle if there is a benign nodule U1 or, or 2, this is just no need for fine needle aspiration biopsy, just we do follow, no follow-up required. And this is very important. But, but don't forget that with U2, if there is a suspicious uh, risk factor, you need to do fine needle aspiration biopsy, and we will cover it in some question. If U3 to U5, we, we mandatory do fine needle aspiration biopsy, even in the small size, according to the thyroid association. According to the fine needle aspiration biopsy, if there is a psi, psi 1, this is an undiagnostic, psi 2, non-neoplastic, psi 3, follicular or neoplasia possible, psi 4, suspicious, psi 5, psi 5, it is a malignant. And this is very important, psi classification because in each exam they will ask a question about the soil psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 psi 4 psi 5 so don't uh, conflict between u1 to 5 and psi 1 to 5 this is very important in our ex in, in, in our exam they ask a question about the thyroid did 1.5 centimeter by ultrasonography and u2 what is the next step you two doing fine needle aspiration biopsy so fine needle aspiration biopsy. u1 and 2 no need for fine needle aspiration biopsy except in the u2 in some circ circumstances u3 to 4 5 you must do fine needle aspiration biopsy and actually the zoom will stop and we will rejoin again immediately And this is a question from the exam lab. And exam labs for uh, each of you is very, very essential source for a question. It contains 200 questions. In each exam, they will pick up randomly about 25 to 30 questions from the exam lab. So in this situation, this is a patient. Okay. This is a, a, a 56 year old uh, woman present with a swelling in the neck. Most important, not to change the size since the first notice since six weeks. The patient is asymptomatic. Examination is not very important, moves up on swallowing. There is no lymphadenopathy, but in, in thyroid sonography, 4.6 centimeter hypochoic, and the TSH is normal this is very important what is the most appropriate next step in the management 
someone mentioned the uh, most of ancient me. B, uh, which is fine. It's a biology. hemithyroidectomy. Hemi? Why hemithyroidectomy? Why hemithyroidectomy? Why hemithyroidectomy? Why hemithyroidectomy? Because, because the serial ultrasound examinations happen quick. Because the, it's a hypoechoic and the size is more than uh, 2.5 centimeters. But uh, you do hemithyroidectomy uh, before assessment. It may be thyroid cancer, for example. Uh, if you do hemothyroidectomy and the uh, cytology mentioned it is babel thyroid carcinoma, what is the next option? To reopen your patient and re-operate uh, another size and to remove a lymph node and uh, so on. So the first choice in assessment of thyroid nodule to exclude thyroid cancer by fine needle aspiration biopsy or diagnose thyroid cancer. So in any patient with EU, it is such as normal or elevated with thyroid nodule, we must do fine needle aspiration as a first step. No need for surgery as a first step. An FDG scan or beta scan is not a very first choice. Actually, if this patient we do fine needle aspiration biopsy and it is a benign nodule, but there is a compression manifestation, then the next step is the operation because the compression, not because it is a benign nodule, its size is large. So, actually, in the exam, they ask about the most appropriate next step in the management. Don't choose a surgery as a first option in any thyroid nodule. Even if it is a malignant thyroid nodule by thyroid ultrasonographic uh, risk stratification, you must do fine needle aspiration biopsy. For example, in the same scenario, if they mentioned that there is a suspicious lymph node microcalcification, a nodule is taller than wider. This is all of them are a suspicious feature. What is the most appropriate next step in, the, in management of this case? Fine needle aspiration biopsy. Okay. An isotope scan uh, option D is not the appropriate next step except if it is such as low. No. So in assessment of any thyroid nodule, if it is such as low, the next option is isotope scan. Optic scan, yes. If it is such as normal or elevated, the next step is fine needle aspiration <laughs> biopsy. Okay. This is very important in every exam. So I will repeat suspicious feature and malignant feature, microcalcification, lobulated, irregular outline, uh, intranodular vascularity, taller than wider, suspicious lymph node, lobulated outline, peripheral calcification. This is all of them are a suspicious feature of malignancy. If in this scenario, for example, uh, if they mention that this thyroid nodule uh, since uh, 20 years of age, 20 or 30 years of age, and not changing the size, and if the patient is asymptomatic, and no uh, suspicious e. feature, what is the most appropriate next step? E. Reassure and discharge. So, if the thyroid nodule since very long duration without any alarming manifestation, in this situation, no need for fine needle aspiration biopsy. Why do you need to do fine needle aspiration today? The nodule since very, very, very long duration and no compression manifestation, no suspicious feature of malignancy, and nodule size the same as since 20 years. So in this situation, discharge and follow up. If there is a manifestation. Yes, in a, in age below 20, this is a, a one of the risk factor of thyroid cancer. In the young age, and this is actually well discovered later on, uh, in, in age is very important, and also male sex is very important, and a growing thyroid disease is very important because this is a feature of uh, suspicious of malignancy. So, in a young patient, you need to do fine needle aspiration biopsy. The size of the nodule is, is it very important? Actually, in the Bridge Thyroid Association guidelines, the size has no impact on differentiating between benign and malignant nodule. But in the American Thyroid Association, they uh, do fine needle aspiration biopsy according to parameters. The first one 
الارض سيروجرافيك باتر اند ذا سكند وان از ذا سيرويد ديل سايز اند اولسو التيرات سيستم السايز از فيري امبورتنت بات ان بريتش سيرويد اسوشيشن السايز از نوت فيري امبورتنت اند انذر كويستشن فروم اسرا If the patient has a multiple nodule and all of them more than one centimeter, shall we do final? Yes. For multinodular goiter, the risk of malignancy is the same as single nodule. But in the case of uh, multinodular goiter, which nodule will we biopsy? The nodule which contains a suspicious feature. If all nodules are the same feature, we will take a biopsy from the most dominant nodule. So in multinodular goiter, the risk of malignancy is the same as single nodule. We need to do fine needle aspiration biopsy to exclude the malignancy. We do fine needle aspiration from the uh, suspicious feature nodule. If all are the same, we, we, we take fine needle aspiration from the most prominent or dominant or largest one, or we can take a biopsy from uh, more than one uh, nodule. Yes, if a suspicious nodule is less than one centimeter, do we need to do fine needle aspiration biopsy? According to the British Thyroid Association, size has no uh, rule for determine in which nodule we do fine needle aspiration biopsy. Once suspicious feature, we, we should do fine needle aspiration biopsy. But in the American uh, recommendation, they didn't recommend fine needle aspiration biopsy if the nodule size is less than one centimeter, except if there is a very high suspicious feature of thyroid malignancy. So this is a uh, demonstrate the six uh, most important ultrasonographic feature indicative of malignancy, malignancy, malignant nodule, the solid hypoechoic nodule, this is one, irregular or speculated or lobulated border, this is the second one, taller than white, and this is a microcalcification, this is a very important suspicious feature of malignancy, and this is a rim calcification with a small extrusion, soft tissue component. This is demonstrate invasion of the thyroid uh, malignancy outside the thyroid uh, capsule or nodule. Suspicious cervical lymph node. And, uh, this is a, a very important suspicious feature. The hilum is loss of the hilum of the lymph node. This is a very uh, important feature in which we uh, um, um, uh, report the lymph node as a suspicious lymph node. But don't forget that no single ultrasonography criterion is reliable in differentiating all benign from the malignant thyroid nodule, but combined ultrasonography feature aid in predicting the benign. So if there is a lot of features, they will uh, more mark the nodule as a malignant. If no suspicious feature but larger size, more than one centimeter, actually according to the British Thyroid, uh, British Thyroid Association, according to U system. So, if the U1 or 2 in this situation, as you mentioned, doctor, in this situation, no follow-up required. But if there is a suspicious feature, that means U3 to U5, you must do fine needle aspiration biopsy. So, according to the U classification, okay, Doctor Agassi, if no suspicious feature, but larger, large size, more than one centimeter, what is the U classification of your nodule? If it is U2. So no need to do fine needle aspiration biopsy. But actually in the latest uh, book, uh, they mentioned that in the U2, no, no need for do doing fine needle aspiration biopsy, especially if they mentioned that no malignant or suspicious feature by name, or mentioned that there is a benign feature. We will discuss it in some questions later, inshallah. So, the fine needle aspiration cytology is a very important and it is, a, before, it is performed in all outpatient setting. One to two aspiration are ca carried out at a dif different site for each suspicious nodule. 
and of course in the diagnostic is satisfactory or diagnostic in about 85 percent so about 15 percent of patient who we do find it as patient biopsy the biopsy will be returned as non-diagnostic the drawback of fine needle aspiration cytology, of course, inadequate or unsatisfactory samples, which represent about 15%, inability to distinguish between non neoplastic benign and malignant follicular neoplasia, follicular carcinoma, or follicular adenoma, it, it is uh, not uh, determined by fine needle aspiration biopsy. And also, a follicular variant of the Babilla cirrhotic carcinoma can not be diagnosed by fine needle aspiration biopsy. And this is uh, what I mentioned previously. Ultrasonography appearance if U1 or U2 should be regarded as reassuring, not requiring fine needle aspiration biopsy unless the patient has statistically high risk of malignancy. Okay, so U2, if the patient, your patient, U1 and U2, no risk factor of thyroid malignancy in this situation no need for fine needle aspiration biopsy if there is a lead a red alarming feature of thyroid cancer for example u2 in a very young patient for example u2 in a patient with a family history of thyroid cancer u2 in a patient with rapidly growing solid thyroid nodule u2 in a patient with previous histophenic radiation. In this situation, you need to do a fine needle aspiration biopsy to label it as a benign nodule. And don't forget that the non palpable nodule, which is discovered accidentally, has the same risk of malignancy as palpable or visualized nodule. It is impossible to differentiate between benign and malignant follicular neoplasia using a fine needle aspiration biopsy. So in this situation, if a fine needle aspiration reported as follicular neoplasia, in most of this situation, you need to do surgical lobectomy to exclude thyroid uh, follicular carcinoma. Uh, Hair cell cell lesion, okay, Dr. Khaled, it is a, a variant of follicular neoplasia actually, and it is put uh, in this uh, category. So, in our exam, they ask a, a question actually about a patient with U2 and no suspicious feature, no risk factor of malignancy. In this situation, no need to do fine needle aspiration, but just follow up. But if they, if they mentioned you too, but the patient has a family history of thyroid cancer, you need to do fine needle aspiration biopsy. And another question in 2021, they mentioned that thyroid nodule for patient with old age, 78, solid, hypoechoic, and U2. What to do in a case, reassurance or fine needle aspiration biopsy, according actually in the, uh, as the scenario. Of the thyroid nodule has a long duration, so no need to do fine needle aspiration biopsy. But if it is a recent onset thyroid nodule, you need to exclude the risk of malignancy by doing fine needle aspiration biopsy because this age is a risk factor for thyroid cancer. A fine needle aspiration report, which initially yield a, a, a size system. This is actually is very important. So, a fine needle aspiration biopsy will be uh, represent U1, Psi uh, 1, Psi 2, Psi 3, Psi 4, Psi 5. So, this is a very important. Psi 2 should be repeated if there is any clinical suspicious of malignancy and or when the US is indeterminate or suspicious. So, don't confused between Psi 2 and U2. Both of them may need fine needle aspiration biopsy. Psi 2 should be repeated if there is any clinical suspicions of malignancy. Psi 2, this is a non-neoplastic lesion. But we need to do it twice 
and both of them are say to who label it as a benign nodule because there is a false negative rate of say to a risk of malignancy is less than three percent psi one which is what does we mean by psi one non-diagnostic sample a sample is hypocellular for example in this situation risk of malignancy is up to five percent what is the next step in psi one to repeat fine needle aspiration biopsy by another expert one by doing fine needle aspiration biopsy under ultrasonographic guide so psi one is obtained a repeat final aspiration waves is mandatory when there is a disconcordance between a level of a clinical suspicious a final aspiration biopsy a serographic pattern a management should be dis discussed within thyroid cancer multidisciplinary team this is very important if there is a discrepancy between a final aspiration cytology and ultrasonographic appearance actually i will follow an ultrasonographic appearance And also there is a molecular profiling, which is very important uh, nowadays, but it is, it is available in all these uh, few uh, countries. In molecular testing for of fine needle aspiration cytology, uh, like PREF, PRESS, RET, PTC, BEX-8, BBAR, gamma testing. This is experience uh, remains limited. And actually this is a, a not uh, updated uh, topic uh, in the thyroid tool and uh, don't uh, suspect it is uh, point to exam and this is how to do fine needle aspiration biopsy it is uh, can be done in every clinic easily by uh, some sort of training and must be done actually under ultrasonographic guide like like this by uh, a syringe uh, a 20 milli syringe or 10 milli syringe by localized anesthesia and uh, this is uh, two types how to obtain steroid nodule fine needle aspiration biopsy uh, this is a question in the exam, uh, like exam. So they ask about a very important scenario. I, I will read the scenario, but which one of the following is the correct description of Psi 2? This is a, a question that we can answer by just reading the question. No need for this scenario. Which one? Psi 2? Yes. Yes, Yen Yen. D. D. Yes, Dr. Asana, this is the correct D. one. So, this is a non neoplastic lesion, not a benign, non neoplastic lesion. Non neoplastic lesion. The correct answer is non neoplastic lesion. What is the next in non neoplastic lesion? If there is a family history of thyroid cancer, if there is a suspicious tissue by ultrasonography, in this situation, we need to redo fine needle aspiration biopsy and cytology. Dr. Khaled, in Thai 2, we don't do We have to repeat it. In U2, if there is a, a risk factor, then we think of, but in Thai 2, we must repeat FNAC. What? So? In Thai 2, we must repeat FNAC. Yes, for, for uh, Sai 2? In Sai 2, we must repeat FNC. Uh, actually, uh, not in all conditions. Actually, this is mentioned in the book. I will uh, repeat it again. Finding this way, which you initially yielded benign cytology, Sai 2, should be repeated if there is any clinical suspicions of malignancy. Or when the ultrasonography is indeterminate or suspicious. This is the only when to repeat Psi 2. Yes, yes, Dr. Sen. Okay, sir. Got it. Uh, actually, in this uh, basis, uh, classification type 2, no. Uh, no need to repeat according to the American Dr. Akes. And actually, this is Thank a very you. important uh, when to repeat uh, because uh, there is a lot of a question. And if you follow uh, uh, all the pattern of the question, you will find that no need to repeat for site two. 
But in the recent updated question, say two, we can repeat finally the aspiration biopsy if there is a, a suspicious feature by ultrasonographic pattern or discrepancy between the sonographic pattern and the soil. So if we repeat, uh, read this question, of course, this is a 35 year old female presented by Bill's lump, notice since three months. So this is a short duration, asymptomatic, no history of radiation exposure, no family history. So there is a, a no alarming manifestation. A, a size, a size of the needle 1.5, no cervical lymphadenopathy, and the fine needle aspiration cytology. So a description of the site is very important because in a lot of exams, they ask about a description of the soil. For example, in our exam, they ask about a description of the Psi-1. Psi-1, this is a non-diagnostic or inadequate sample. Psi-2, non-neoplastic. Psi-3, suspicious or follicular lesion. Psi, special Psi-3F. Psi-4, suspicious of malignancy. Psi-5, diagnosis of malignancy. What is the next option if we Psi-1 repeat sampling? Psi-2, two samples three to six months apart showing benign appearance are indicated to exclude a new blazia if rapid growth pressure affects high risk diagnostic lobectomy may be indicated in some cases because in some exam for example for example they mentioned that a thyroid cytology showing site 2 and after repeating it there is site 2 but in our test scenario, there is a suspicious feature. What is the next option to do diagnostic lobectomy in this case? So, say one, this is an undiagnostic or inadequate sample, and in this situation, we must repeat the sample. Say two, non-neoplastic. Non in this case, we need to do another sample if there is a alarming feature of malignancy or suspicious feature of malignancy. Size 3, which is a follicular lesion, size 3F, in this situation, we should do diagnostic lobectomy. Uh, actually, this is like uh, surgical excision no, no, not means a complete thyroidectomy, actually. Uh, surgical excision means, in most of cases, uh, just lobectomy or hemicyrodectomy. But actually, if there is a suspicious feature in another loop, in this situation, we do complete cyrodectomy. Say to immediately, actually, in this, uh, within three to six months, uh, after three to six months, actually, uh, repeating say two. Psi uh, 4, this is a suspicious of malignancy, and this, in this situation, surgical excision because the risk of malignancy is 80%. Psi 5, diagnosis of malignancy in this situation, surgical excision for differential thyroid cancer and radio serum and chemotherapy for anaplastic thyroid cancer and lymphoma or metastasis. Yes, lobectomy is the same as hemicyrodectomy. And actually, in the exam, they ask a lot of questions about this slide. So this is a very important slide. In this, in the exam, they may ask a question about soy and ask about a description of this soy. For example, psi 4 means what? And also, they may ask about the action you need to do after soy. For example, psi 3F. What is the next option? Lobectomy. And what also, yes, yes. What? Yes, Doctor Malik. Okay. And in another exam, they may ask about the risk of malignancy in a specific soil. Actually, in our exam, they ask about risk of malignancy in Psi 3F, risk of malignancy up to 20%. Psi 4, risk of malignancy 80%. Psi 5, risk of malignancy more than 95%. Psi 6, 
Psi 1, the risk of malignancy is about 5%. And actually, I collect them. I, I will give you a table about this. Uh, for example, in uh, 2020 exam, they ask about Psi 3F, what is the next management? Diagnostic lobectomy or hemisyroidectomy. In our exam, they ask about the Psi 1 means what? Non-diagnostic sample. And also they ask about what is the next option for the Psi 1 to repeat sampling, repeat final aspiration biopsy. In 2020, uh, 2021, they ask about Psi-4 refer to what? Psi-4, suspicious of malignancy. Risk of malignancy is 80%. What is the next option? Surgical excision. Of course, with Psi-5, because if we treat it, we do total cyrodectomy because Psi-5 the risk of malignancy is more than 95, so we do total cyrodectomy because this is the treatment of a choice for differential thyroid cancer. Total cyrodectomy, then radioactive iodine ablation, then suppressive therapy. And this is another table from the uh, fourth edition of the Oxford Handbook. Psi-1 means non-diagnostic or insufficient epithelial cells. We should do repeat sampling, and this is a question in 2016. Don't forget, this is a new type, Psi-1C. C means cyst, fluid with insufficient colloid and epithelial cells. What is the action correlate with the clinical arthrosterographic finding? So, Psi-1C means Psi-1 cyst. Psi-2, this is an aneuplastic, correlate with the clinical arthrosterographic finding, and we can repeat a final aspiration biopsy within three to six months. Uh, don't forget that Psi 3A and Psi 3F. F follicular, A atypical. So Psi 3F lobectomy, Psi 3A atypical feature, we need to repeat fine needle aspiration biopsy. And actually, this is exam in, in the previous two years' exam, 2020 and 2021. They ask about the action if Psi 3A. So, Psi 3A is a typical feature present, but not enough to place it into any other categories. What is the next option, uh, action to do? Repeat final aspiration cytology. Discussion at thyroid cancer MDT. Psi 3F suspected follicular neoplasia. Is it follicular adenoma or carcinoma? I don't know. By biopsy, we cannot differentiate between follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma. So what is the action? Diagnostic thyroidectomy. With completion, thyroidectomy if malignant. Uh, and the risk of malignancy is this category because this is our exam, 10 to 40 percent. So we should do hemisyroidectomy. Psi 5, 4. Suspicious of malignancy. What is the next option? Diagnostic hemisyroidectomy. Risk of malignancy is 70%. And this actual, in the uh, briefest exam, they ask about a risk of malignancy in different psi. Psi 5 diagnosis of malignancy. And in this situation, we need to do total thyroidectomy because the risk of malignancy here more than 98%. Of course, surgical excision for differential thyroid carcinoma, radiotherapy or chemotherapy for anaplastic thyroid cancer, lymphoma, and metastasis. So this is a very important slide. In each exam, they will ask two questions from the side uh, classification, and they will ask at least one question about the new classification. So I collect the risk of malignancy in different side. Psi 1, risk of malignancy about 5%. And this is the question in 2020. In Psi 2, risk of malignancy is less than 3. Psi 3A and 3F, risk of malignancy between 10 and 40. So in F, it is elevated about 20 or, 20 or 30. 
and psi A, we should do repeating fine needle aspiration biopsy. Psi 4, hemicyrodectomy, risk of malignancy about 70%. Psi 5, the risk of malignancy is very, very high in this situation. We sure this is a diagnosis of malignancy. El Bethesda system, this is another classification. Actually, this is from one of my previous uh, presentation, and I mentioned that this is the psi classification and what is the uh, Bethesda system classification. For example, psi 2, this is a benign cytology, and uh, I demonstrate a risk of malignancy according to the American uh, recommendation or, or American guidelines. This is not a very important slide, but I, I, I add it as an illustrative to differentiate between Bethesda classification and uh, psi classification. This is a, a question from exam lab. Anyone need to do it, to read the question? Eighty-five year old woman. Can I read? Yes. Yes. Go on. Eighty-five year old woman was referred with a lump in her neck. She had no symptoms of thyroid disease. On examination, she had a two to three centimeter foam mass at the lower port of right thyroid lobe. Her resting pulse was 90 beat per minute and regular investigation. Thyroid stimulating hormone 3.5, which is within the normal range. Serum 3T4, 15 picomoles per liter. Serum T3, 6.2 picomoles per liter. Anti-TPO, antibodies 28 international unit per liter. Ultrasound of the thyroid show thyroid mixed cystic solid mass with scattered microcalcification. Fine needle aspiration cytology is thy 3A. So what, what is the most appropriate option? What? what is the most appropriate next step in her management? Yes. So I, I see most of you choose D. Okay. And someone choose E. Actually, as we mentioned in the previous slide, this is one. Psi is 3A, repeat fine needle aspiration biopsy. Psi is 3F, hemicyrodectomy. So in this question, 3A, what is the best option? Repeat fine needle aspiration babes. What if they mention that psi 2 a psi 2? What is the next option? Psi 2, which is a non-neoplastic. So repeat the uh, FNC after the, uh, why to repeat in psi 2? Because there is a microcalcification which is a suspicious feature of malignancy. So in this case, if the psi 2, in this situation, we need to repeat final aspiration biopsy within three to six months because there is a suspicious feature by ultrasonographic, uh, by ultrasonography. But if there is no ultrasonographic uh, suspicious feature, we can reassure and discharge if psi 2. If this is psi 3, F, what is the next option? Hemitarel. E. What? Hemithyroidectomy. Hemithyroidectomy. What if a psi 4? What if psi 5? Psi 5? Total thyroidectomy. Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, we repeat them. Uh, actually, we repeat the fine needle aspiration biopsy. In this situation, we can repeat it immediately. But uh, we, we, uh, if psi 2, we need to repeat it within two, uh, after three to six months. But in the psi 3A or uh, psi 1, we need to repeat it immediately with uh, under ultrasonographic uh, guidance. And this is from the atoll book, the second edition. This is also summarized all the psi and what is the interpretation and what is the action and actually this is a very important slide also
So don't forget that size 3A is a typical feature and uh, fine needle aspiration biopsy, this is the action. If repeat fine needle aspiration biopsy, size 3A also, we need to discuss it with multidisciplinary team. In this situation, for example, if we redo fine needle aspiration biopsy and represent size 3A, what is the next option? So we do it twice and both of them are 3A. What is the next option? Because this is actually in sum of exam. Two psi three A. What is the next option? Yeah, excisional biopsy. I am with you actually. Excisional biopsy because the micro calcification is a risk of pattern. The age is a risk factor. So in this situation, if we do a twice psi. 3A, the best option is multidisciplinary team discussion, and actually, we should do uh, diagnostic hemisyroidic. And this is the American recommendation according to the thyroid pattern. This is the same as you system, um, uh, not the same, but it is similar. But they do find it especially perhaps, according to the size. Not the size alone, it's size and the pattern of thyroid nodule, and this is not very important for the exam. And this is, this is a question from a previous exam in 2019 and 2016. Sai 1, so do repeat final aspiration babes twice with cystic change patient represented by hoarseness of voice. So we do uh, final twice, and both of them are Sai 1. And the patient represented by hoarseness of voice, what is the next step? Of course, this is a suspicious, very suspicious feature, which means invasion. And the risk of malignancy is Psi 1, about 5%. In this situation, we need to do fine uh, the diagnostic lobectomy. So this is our approach to any patient with thyroid nodule. We do SH. If it SH is normal or elevated, in this situation, we need to do fine needle aspiration biopsy according to the size and the pattern according to the American recommendation or according to the suspicious feature or use classification according to the bridge association, uh, bridge thyroid association. If it is such is low or suppressed, what is the next option? Thyroid scan. Thyroid scan, if it is hot, hot nodule, so the surgery or radioactive iodine is the best option. If cold nodule, what is the next option? Is to do fine needle aspiration biopsy. This slide is very important and actually Zoom will stop here and we rejoin again uh, immediately. So this is slide is very important practically. We do thyroid scan only if it TSH is low or suppressed. It TSH. So this slide is very important. Uh, Doctor um, Doctor Sadia said uh, no rule for anti-steroid drug in the hot nodule. We uh, actually will discuss it in the next uh, session, inshallah, when we discuss cytotoxicosis. But actually, the hot nodule, the permanent it, it, uh, treatment is surgery or radioactive ID. We give anti-steroid drug to control cytotoxicosis until uh, refer to the surgery or radioactive ID. But if the patient is not candidate for surgery or radioactive ID, we can give him anti steroid medication. So I will go complete our sessions today by computer computed tomography a CT scan a CT scan the main rule in the assessment of the thyroid gland uh, for evaluation of retrosternal and retrosternal retrotracheal extension of the enlarged thyroid because if there is a retrosternal extension of the thyroid gland it will lead to compression and actually in this situation need a surgery but don't forget that a flow volume loop is the best method for detecting an obstruction associated with the rest retrosternal goiter. So, in, if there is a retrosternal goiter, flow volume loop is 
the best method for assessment of the obstruction not ct the ct is the second option Uh, do, uh, Dr. Akaz said, uh, do we should do TSH receptor antibody first or scan in a case of TSH suppression? Dr. Mehewish, uh, is the voice clear or not? Clear yeah, or Okay. Uh, according to the case, Dr. Akaz, uh, TSH receptor, if you... Uh, of course, the TSH receptor antibody can differentiate between a grave disease and other cause of cytotoxicosis and also a thyroid decay. But actually, in, in our situation here, uh, this is for the assessment of thyroid nodule. For the thyroid nodule, no rule for TSH receptor antibody. Except if the thyroid nodule present in a patient with a grave disease. So a TSH receptor antibody is positive. This is a grave disease, but a thyroid nodule in this situation, we need to assess a thyroid nodule. In, and in this situation, we will go immediately to find needle aspiration bears. And actually, this is a, a very important hint, uh, Dr. Akasi, and I will cover it in the next session, inshallah. Thank you, sir. Because there are uh, actually a very important question in the exam lab ask about a case of a patient presented with cytotoxicosis and with a thyroid nodule. In this situation, what is the next option? If it is such a receptor antibody is positive. You've got so cytotoxic patient with thyroid nodule and the TSH receptor antibody is positive. What is the next option in this situation? Scan. No, 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 no. Why is scan? Why is scan? A TSH receptor the antibody is positive. So a cytotoxicosis is caused by underlying a grave disease. So we diagnose a grave disease. And in this situation, we need to diagnose a thyroid nodule. It is a malignant or not. In this situation, we should go immediately to find needle aspiration biopsy to, to this thyroid nodule. Because a TSH receptor antibody is positive. So a cytotoxicosis is caused by underlying grave disease. The same scenario, patient presented with cytotoxicosis, with thyroid nodule, with TSH receptor antibody is negative. What is the next option? Thyroid scan. Yeah. So if a TSH receptor antibody is positive, we will go immediately to find needle aspiration biopsy. If it is such a receptor antibody is negative, we will go to thyroid scan as the first option. And actually, this is a very important question, I think, in exam lab, and we will co uh, cover it, uh, inshallah, in the next session. Okay. Thank you, sir. A, a beta scan, what is important in the beta scan? A, a positron emission tomography, this is uh, most important, a 20% of thyroid in syndeteloma discovered by beta scan is a malignant nodule. And actually, in our exam, they ask a question uh, from this point. A risk of malignancy in the beta scan thyroid in syndeteloma. And this require final aspiration biopsy. And overall, survival, survival may be poor. The bit scan, the bit CT scan is a useful technique for dif image dif differentiation of metastatic thyroid cancer, risk stratification, and the prediction of survival to high risk group. A recurrent thyroid cancer that is FDG avid positive, unlikely to respond to even high dose radioiodine therapy. The bit CT with radioactive iodine 1. 24 is more sensitive in detecting metastatic thyroid cancer than the gamma uh, camera imaging. And in ex our exam, they give image like this. This is a beta scale showing a thyroid uh, nodule. The risk of malignancy in this nodule is 20%. What is the next option? Doing final aspiration biopsy for this nodule. Okay, 
and this is very important slide because a referral a criteria in the final exam is very important either in the thyroid nodule either in the diabetes a chapter in the actual referral criteria is very important a retinal a diabetic retinopathy and so on so which nodule thyroid lump or nodule managed in primary care if thyroid lump or goiter which remain unchanged in size with no risk factor for thyroid cancer for long duration non-palpable thyroid nodule less than one centimeter incidentally detected can be managed in primary care without a suspicious feature a nodule which should be filled at the same day patient pre presented by stripe should be referred the same day non-urgent re referral abnormal thyroid function test sudden onset of the pain in the thyroid lump this is a hemorrhage in the thyroid nodule but need non-urgent referral a gradually enlarging over months and this is a non-urgent referral urgent referral within two weeks within two weeks if there is unexplained hardness of voice and or a presence of cervical lymph node this need referral within two weeks thyroid nodule in a child should be referred within two weeks rapid enlarging over weeks painless thyroid mass should be referred within two weeks so sudden onset of pain in the thyroid lump non-urgent referral rapid enlarging painless painless thyroid nodule should be referred urgently strider referred in the same day okay so this is slide is very important in the exam uh, some additional laboratory investigation just as, as, as some two or two or three papers uh, from the oxford handbook uh, hematological test a long-standing cytotoxicose may be presented by normal chromic anemia mild neutropenia lymphocytosis thrombocytopenia don't forget this El hypothyroidism may be presented by macrocytosis is a typical although concurrent vitamin b12 deficiency should be considered and may be presented by microcytic anemia due to the menorrhagia and the paired iron utilization alkali phosphatase may be elevated in the cytotoxicosis don't forget this mild hypercalcemia also may be presented in cytotoxicosis and don't forget that the patient with cytotoxicosis may be presented by itching or hypercalcemia in hypothyroidism, the patient may be presented by hyponatremia, hyponatremia. In hypothyroidism, creatinine kinase is often raised and the lipid profile altered with increasing LDL cholesterol. And how to manage this lipidemia in a patient with hypothyroidism? By giving thyroxine, replacement therapy, not statin. So if a patient presented with this lipidemia, and the TSH is elevated. How to manage this patient? Not by giving a statin, just replacement therapy by thyroxine. Because this is a question in some exam. And don't, don't forget the, this in a patient with a primary hypothyroidism, the prolactin will be elevated. Because a serum prolactin may be elevated because increased TRH has a negative feedback mechanism will lead to increase the prolactin secretion. The TRH will stimulate the antibiotic gland to secrete the prolactin. And this may cause infertility. So the hypothyroidism was in a mildly elevated the prolactin, just a treated hypothyroidism, and the serum prolactin will be normalized. And also in cytotoxicosis, sex hormone by the globulin will be increased. And this can be caused a gynecomastia, mild gynecomastia. So don't forget the net physiologic result is an increase in the estrogenic activity with gynecomastia and decrease in the libido in the male presenting with cytotoxicosis because sex hormone by the globulin is elevated. 
النون ثيرويدال انس ذيس از ذا لاست توبيك توداي ان شاء الله النون ثيرويدال انس اور سيك اي ثيرويد سندروم اند اكشوال ان ذا اكزام ذير ار سيرفر وان اور تو كويستشن اباوت ذيس توبيك اند افتر ذات وي ويل سولف سم اوف كويستشنز الميكانيزم اوف اكشن اوف نون ثيرويدال انس از ا لوت اوف فاكتورز اكشوالي ذا موست امبورتنت وان از اولترنيشن اوف ذا ايدونيز انزاي ذا ايدونيز 1 2 3 also the sh secretion may be impaired because in non thyroidal illness the patient may be received corticosteroid the corticosteroid and dopamine will lead to decrease the secretion of tsh the thyroid hormone binding protein will be affected the transport of the thyroid hormone will be affected and also the thyroid hormone receptor activity will be affected so the most important in non thyroidal illness syndrome or sick e thyroid syndrome T3 and T4 is low, is decreased, and TSH will be normal or low. So, a non thyroid illness is called low T3 syndrome. A T3 is low, a T4 is low, a TSH is low or normal. Don't forget that it's severe illness. Yes? Reverse T3 will be high. Will be elevated will be elevated and uh, i will discuss it in the next slide yes uh, yes dr iman after finishing of this we we can take a rest five minutes uh, so a severe illness like any patient in intensive care unit severe infection severe pain renal failure cardiac failure liver failure end stage malignancy in this situation you must suspect non thyroidal illness syndrome a treatment of non thyroidal illness syndrome no treatment just follow up and redo thyroid function test after recovery of the severe illness Uh, some authorities recommend the thyroxine replacement therapy, which is not recommended uh, in the guidelines. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, this is a very important question, Dr. Khaled Wafi. How to differentiate between secondary thyroid and secondary or central hypothyroidism? Uh, both conditions presented by the same thyroid function test, but in the non thyroidal illness, The patient is severely ill, severe pain, admitted to the intensive care unit, renal failure, severe cardiac failure, liver failure, interstage renal disease. But in the patient with central hypothyroidism, the patient is not severely ill. The patient is usually manifested by hypothyroidism or centrally uh, brain lesion. And in this situation, we uh, diagnose it as a central hypothyroidism, for example. But from the lab, yes, yes, uh, uh, clinical, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Asami. So in, in a previous exam, they asked a question about a patient presented by severe burn with low TSH, low T4. So the, we can diagnose it as a sick thyroid syndrome. What is the best option to repeat the thyroid function test after recovering? No rule for uh, replacement therapy. Uh, no, pituitary apoplexy uh, uh, not cause sick thyroid syndrome. Actually, sick thyroid syndrome is a, a, a generalized illness, actually, uh, not a pituitary uh, illness like pituitary apoplexy. Pituitary apoplexy can cause central hypothyroidism. And this is from so the. I need to say that. Yes? Sorry, I mean to say that, like, you know, the T3, T4, and TSH can be low in patients with pituitary apoplexy, and they can also be sick at the same time. Yes, yes, I, I am with you, Taba, of course. In say, pituitary apoplexy, this is a, a cause uh, central hypothyroidism. Uh, so, it, low T3 and low T4 and low or, or, or uh, uh, normal or low TSH uh, diagnosed as a central hypothyroidism. The mechanism of uh, can we measure reverse T3? Actually, yes, but not in all uh, centers or countries. So, a reverse T3 will be elevated in the sick e thyroid syndrome, and this is a very important uh, marker for uh, the uh, for differentiating 
السيك اي سيروس سيندروم فروم انذر كونديشن الميكانيزم اوف اكشن دونت فورجيت ذات الدي الدي 1 اند الدي 2 ويل بي ديكريز ان ذا سيك اي سيروس سيندروم بيكوز ذيس از فيري امبورتنت كويشن الدي 1 ليد تو ويت وات D1 represent in which organ? Liver, liver and, kidney. and kidney. And muscle, D2 represent in which organ? Pituitary and the neuron. D1 and D2 responsible for conversion of which to which? T4 to T3. Yes. What about the D3? Placenta reverse T3. Yes. So, Convert T3 to reverse uh, T4 to reverse T3 and convert T3 to to T2. Yes, T2. T2. And they present mainly in the placenta. So in the second ischial syndrome, D1 and D2 will be decreased. And in another scenario, D3 may be elevated. So in a toll book, this the latest edition, you will find a uh, 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 study brain actual study brain uh, i will give this a question because in a study brain in a previous edition they mentioned that d3 is elevated increased and in the uh, updated edition they mentioned that d1 is decreased both answers are correct the most correct one is a fixture of d1 and d2 in the thick thyroid syndrome so, a D1 and a D2 decrease lead to modest fall in the free T3 and the free T4. And this will lead to elevation of reverse T3 because the agonist S3 is activated. Also, in the pituitary, increases cytokine, which lead to decreased TH, which is a feature of non thyroidal illness. So, this diagram mentions that in the non thyroidal illness, a D1 is decreased, so a conversion of T4 to T3 will decrease, so a net result T3 will be decreased. At the same time, a D4 is converted to reverse T3 by the IRS type 3, so leading to increase reverse T3. And in our exam in 2019, they ask a question about enzyme responsible for conversion of T4 to reverse T3, which is? D3. D3. Yes, this is a question from our previous exam. Enzyme responsible for conversion of D4 to reverse T3. This is a D3 mainly in the placenta. And this is prevent a transportation of thyroxine from the mother to the fetus from week 20 to some extent because we mentioned the previously cyroxine is passed through placenta but not the same degree across the gestational age So this is a very important, uh, actually, uh, diagram chasing the thyroid hormone during a severe illness from the heavy thickest box. And they mentioned that reverse T3 in the illness is elevated. A total T3 will be decreased. A total T4 will be decreased. A TSH may be normal. A TSH may be normal or low. And during the recovery stage of the illness, a reverse T3 will be decreased, a T3 will be increased, and the total T4 will be increased and normalization of the TSH. So during the recovery stage of the severe illness, the thyroid function test will return to the normal with a specific pattern. And actually, a thyroid function test parameters will be different according to the severity of the illness. More severe reverse T3 will be more elevated, and the T3 will be lower and lower, and this can be proportional to the mortality rate. 
So, the bed full with thyroid function test in non-thyroidal illness. The TSH will be suppressed in hospitalized patient with acute illness. Don't forget that the dopamine, the corticoid, the somatostatin will suppress the antibiotic or more like the TSH. The anorexia nervosa, for example, is associated with low TSH and the T4. The heterophil antibody lead to falsely elevated TSH. Their adrenal insufficiency may be associated with raised TSH, which reverses in the treatment with glucocorticoid. And actually, if the patient with adrenal insufficiency presented by raised TSH and do diagnose it incorrectly as primary hypothyroidism and give thyroxine, the patient may be adrenal crisis. So we must give uh, corticosteroid before replacement with thyroxine. And this is very important, and we will cover it with adrenal uh, chapter. The heparin is very important because it leads to increased the free T4 and also T3 with no change in the TSH. Heparin causes a false rise in the free T4 due to the displacement of the SA. In a typical clinical situation, this is the last slide in our presentation before uh, the question and the summary. A typical clinical situation in the exam, this is very important, cyrotoxicosis factitia, factitiata. This is a hydrogenic cyrotoxicosis. Patient received cyroxine without no need, no required for replacement therapy. Why receive cyroxine for any cause? In this situation, how to cause a hydrogenic cyrotoxicosis or cyrotoxicosis factitiata? No thyroid enlargement. Elevated the free T4 with suppressed TSH, the same as cyrotoxicosis. But if we do scintigraphy, depressed thyroid uptake, the same as thyroiditis. The most important is thyroglobulin is low. The first three items, the same as thyroiditis. Thyroiditis may be presented by no thyroid enlargement with elevated free T4 with suppressed TSH, and also thyroid scan is suppressed, depressed. This is the thyroiditis. How to differentiate between thyroiditis and thyrotoxicosis factitiata? No thyroglobulin. Because the thyroglobulin is elevated in all thyroid disorders except thyrotoxicosis factitiata. Okay. So, in exam, in fact, the cyrotoxicosis should be diagnosed by exclusion. The TSH is low, elevated to 54, low TG, low thyroid optic. And this actually exam, a question in the exam, they ask a question about factitious cyrotoxicosis and diagnosed by scan versus cyroglobin, which is better? Actually, I don't know. Maybe thyroglobin is low, and also a thyroid scan is very important. Which one is the best one? Actually, according to the scenario. So don't forget that a thyroid scan can differentiate between thyrotoxicosis, uh, different HIG, but cannot differentiate between thyroiditis versus thyrotoxicosis factitiata. A low thyroglobin can differentiate between its thyrotoxicosis factitiata and thyro, uh, thyroiditis. Another uh, atypical clinical situation of cytotoxicosis, which is stroma over eye. This is ovarian teratoma containing hyperfunction thyroid tissue. In this situation, stroma over eye, the patient is present by cytotoxicosis. TSH is low, T3, T4 elevated. No thyroid gland enlargement. If you do thyroid scan upon the neck, what the result? Low uptake. But if you do whole body scan, you will find a hot spot upon the ovary because ovarian teratoma containing hyperfunctioning thyroid tissue. So body scan after radioiodine confer diagnosis of stroma over your eye. So stroma over your eye, the same as thyroiditis, the same as thyrotoxicosis factitiata. But if we do whole body scan, he uptake hot spot. Over, uh, over the ovary. A trophoblastic tumor, which is HCG tumor, has a structure homology with the TSH, 
both of the SH and HCG and LH and FSH contains the same uh, alpha molecule and lead to thyroid gland stimulation and usually mild thyrotoxicosis. So, a trophoblast tumor, this is a patient presented with gynecomastia and stipular tumor and mild symptom of thyrotoxicosis. And if you do HCG, will be positive in the male patient, so it is a trophoblastic tumor. Hyperemis gravidarum. Yes, when to suspect the stroma of RUI, as I mentioned the previous, this is a female, mainly presented by a manifestation of cytotoxicosis without a large thyroid, without a basogonomic feature of a grave disease. And if you do thyroid scan, it shows or suppressed thyroid uptake uh, over the neck. There is abdominal mass, so you need to suspect it is maybe stroma over your eye. If you do whole body scan, it show a hot uh, ovarian teratome. In hyper is gravidarum, we will discuss it later in the next or another sessions during the discussion of thyroid disorder during the pregnancy, and also choriocarcinoma, which testes may be associated with gynecomastia and thyrotoxicosis, and major HCG, and it is, to some extent, Confused with trophoblast tumor, and this we will this how to differentiate between them in the Gonet shop. Yes, yes, Dr. Khalid, uh, we will discuss hyperemis gravidarum with gestational cytotoxicosis because both conditions, uh, to some extent, similar. TSH will be low with elevation of thyroid hormone, hyperemis gravidarum, and gestational cytotoxicosis, but. To differentiate between them, it is a TSH receptor antibody is very important in this situation. In hyperemis gravidarum, if it is mild, uh, treated by supportive treatment only, may the patient require just a beta blocker. But gestational, uh, cyrotox uh, gestational cytotoxicosis, it is a severe form of hyperemis gravidarum, and also it needs supportive treatment. Another situation we can differentiate, we need to differentiate is a grave disease in the uh, first trimester, which require anti steroid medication, uh, provide cyrocele in the first trimester. And actually, this topic we will discuss it uh, in the, inshallah in the next session. So I, I will go to some uh, few uh, questions before uh, stopping off this Zoom, Zoom session, because just we have 10 minutes and we take a rest for five minutes and we resume to complete our session today, inshallah. Dr. Khalid, one question, please. Yes, doctor. Yes. Dr. Yes, I am with you. Dr. Khalid, what are, the indications? what are the indications of PET scan to differentiate from uh, thyroid cancer from metastasis? Indication, I... when we do? Uh, for thyroid cancer? For thyroid cancer. Where, when we diagnose it on ultrasound and uh, uh, FNSC, then we go for PET scan. No, no, no. PET scan has no rule in, in the diagnosis of thyroid cancer, actually. This is a PET scan. Is this for follow-up and, and so on. But uh, okay. diagnose mainly uh, thyroid ultrasonography, fine needle separation, biopsy, and surgery. And after that... After that, in follow up, we will discuss it in the thyroid cancer uh, session, inshallah, because this is a very important uh, session. Okay, okay sir. Thank so, you. this is a patient presented by uh, doing a cabbage uh, or coronary artery bypass graft and is very slow to mobilize. So, what do you think about this scenario? The patient, coronary artery bypass graft, since a few days. What is the what do no you think? No intervention required. What? No intervention required. Yes, this is this is a beginning of non thyroidal illness syndrome, and maybe a question asked about the heparin. For example, the patient with cabbage need heparin. Maybe if if doing another bone replacement and so on. So you must suspect in this situation. This is a non thyroidal illness. If it is normal, T3 is below the normal, which of the following is the most appropriate? So the diagnosis is sick, thyroid syndrome, and no intervention is required.
Another question like this. So actually, I will go to the, the labs. T6 is low. T4 is elevated. T3 is elevated. The antibody is negative. The antibody here, he mentioned uh, he, the uh, anti TBO, anti TG, T6 receptor antibody. But cytoglobulin is 2 nanogram and the normal level is less than 60. What is the what? Was hyper was hyper yes. 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 Uh, uh, so we can diagnose factitious cytotoxicosis from cytoglobulin is low with cytotoxicosis. Radio uh, radio nucleotide uptake scan reveal marked reduced uptake. So this is a factitious hyperthyroidism. Factitious hyperthyroidism. This is another question from the exam lab. A patient presented with admitted with the right lower lobe pneumonia. Once we see lower lobe pneumonia, we must suspect non thyroidal illness. This is a first try, uh, one of uh, differential diagnosis we must put in our mind. Also, Hi, drugs that can the... interfere with a cyanotoxic disease. Lithium, and you said hyperthyroidism. Thyroid hormone resistance. Okay, yes, yes. So, so I will read to complete. The patient was found with AF. Once you see AF, what is the next? Uh, what what you need to put in your mind? Amiodarone. Amiodarone mm -hmm. is one an option, and it's affection to the thyroid function test. Heparin, if need, uh, anticoagulation. This is very important uh, issue. She had a history of bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder it means lithium. Lithium can cause hyper or hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism in most cases, but can cause hypothyroidism. So lithium usually cause hypothyroidism in about more than. 20% uh, of cases, but can cause hyperthyroidism in uh, minimal cases. Her menstrual period were normal. It is such is normal. 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 Not low normal. It is a normal. 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 Free T4 is elevated. Free T3, free T3 is elevated. What is the most option here? We, you, you must suspect thyroid hormone interference. So he mentioned that a say interference had been excluded. So if you see a patient like this, a TSH is normal with elevated free thyroid hormone T3 and T4, you must suspect thyroid hormone assay interference. So assay interference had been excluded. Sex hormone by the globulin is normal. Thyroid hormone receptor alpha subunit is low is uh, normal is normal uh, so serotonin mm -hmm. alpha subunit is normal which is exclude it is mm -hmm. so in this case scenario we need to central serotoxicosis so amiodarone is option Okay. Someone mentioned that in Amiodaron. Is this scenario, is this scenario uh, maybe due to the Amiodaron? Actually, no. No. Amiodaron induced cytotoxicosis, TSH is low. Either type 1 and type 2, TSH is low. So, this is not a Amiodaron case. And actually, we will discuss it in more details in amiodarone in the session of the amiodarone because it is very important in the final uh, exam. It is lithium induced hyperthyroidism. No, it is not hyperthyroidism. It is, it is normal. So hyperthyroidism is not correct. Non thyroidal illness. No, because non thyroidal illness T3 is low, not elevated. Serbicious injection of thyroxine. It will lead to T H is low. Here it is such a norm. Thyroid hormone resistance. So, thyroid hormone resistance versus TSH home. As in alpha subunit is normal, so it is thyroid hormone resistance. So, the correct answer is yes, thyroid, thyroid hormone, hormone resistance syndrome. And so this is I, really I, important. I, 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 I,
What? So this thyroid resistance uh, syndrome. Yes. Thyroid resistance. Uh, Doctor Ayman asked about what is say interference. Um, as we mentioned the previous and shared uh, session about uh, when thyroid function test labs lie. Uh, this is, uh, for example, a biotin, for example. If this patient takes a biotin, a biotin will lead to SH is low and the free T3 will free T4 elevated. But if the thyroid hormone is done in some uh, machines, the specific machines, may be normal with elevation of the free T3 and the free T4. So the biotin can interfere and can lead to a similar thyroid function test like this. Also, heterophil antibody and macro TSH can lead to interference like this. And this is the assay interference. Can be suspicious ingestion of thyroxine as its TSH needs sometimes to... No, 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 no. A suppression of TSH is suppression of... If, if anyone uh, received the exogenous thyroxine, the first uh, thyroid function test will be affected with TSH. A recovery okay. of TSH... A recovery from suppression of TSH need a very long duration. But its suppression of TSH okay. is the first TSH function test will be okay. Once okay. you receive exogenous thyroxine, the first thyroid function test to be affected is the TSH. Yeah. Okay. In a case of heart disease, if you give antithyroid drug, right, the last test to be rendered normal is the sterilization of separation need a very pro, uh, uh, long duration. Okay. So this is a very important slide which demonstrates a different type of lithium, phenytoin, carbamazepine, and deliberin. And actually, we discuss it in more details in the previous. Uh, Dr. Saadiya mentioned, could it be an early cyrotic cause? No. Why? Because in early cyrotic cause, the first thyroid function test will be affected as a TSH. Before the elevation of T4, TSH will be suppressed. Normal TSH exclude all the primary thyroid disorders. This is very important issue. Normal TSH exclude the primary thyroid disorder by 100%. So this is a female presented by uh, to the endocrine clinic by abnormal thyroid function test. Give a three-year history of increased sweating and anxiety, and they diagnosed uh, or uh, this manifestation attributed to post-traumatic stress syndrome. TSH is normal. With elevation of the free T4 and normal free T3. Don't look for the options. What do you think about these options? Factitious cytotoxicosis. Um, but please don't forget that. In any case of cytotoxicosis, TSH will be suppressed. A TSH will be normal. Here, a TSH is normal. So, normal TSH exclude any cause of primary cytotoxicosis, exclude a factitious cytotoxicosis. So, this is not a factitious cytotoxicosis. In factitious cytotoxicosis, a T4 is elevated, a TSH must be low. So, what is the next option? E, use of combined oral contraceptive pills. What oral contraceptive pills, how it affects the thyroid function test? It will increase the TBG, so will affect all the total thyroid hormone. So, if any female use combined oral contraceptive pills, the total T4 and the total T3 will be elevated with normal free thyroid hormone with normal TSH. So this is also not a combined oral contraceptive bath. Someone say a say interference. What about resistance to thyroid hormone or TSH secreting pituitary adenoma? The patient is symptomatic mild symptoms and the free T4 is elevated and the TSH is normal. Why not TSH secreting pituitary adenoma or resistance to thyroid hormone?
if anyone want to comment the tc is normal yes 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 in 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 resistance to sarod ramon both free t4 and the free t3 must be elevated in case such secreting between adenoma both t3 and t4 must be elevated so if you see a case like okay. this a TSH is normal with elevated free T4 with normal T3 the first option must be a say interference say interference when you see a discrepancy between the clinical and the steroid function test a say interference must be a, is a first choice So our golden rules, divergence with the previous results, or discrepancy with, with other biochemical parameters, or a clinical setting are paramount in suspecting thyroid function as interference. Another question. A patient presented by general lethargy, difficulty in sleeping, no family history of thyroid disease. Not on any regular drug replacement therapy. The free T4 is elevated, the free T3 is elevated, the TSH is mildly elevated. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in the management? Genetic testing. What genetic testing? No family history. No family history here. Even if there is a family history. Consider a say Yes, as I mentioned previously, if you see thyroid function test the same as TSH trauma or thyroid hormone resistance, this is a very rare condition. Before diagnosis of this condition, you must exclude it as say interference. But Don't here, forget the college, there is no discrepancy between the clinical symptoms and uh, Thyroid profile. He, she's actually, actually, he, actually, normally, physiological response of elevation of free T3 and the free T4 is no, suppression of TSH. This is a normal physiological negative feedback me mm -hmm. mechanism. Once you see TSH is elevated with elevation of the free T4 and the free T3, don't suspect TSH trauma or TSH thyroid hormone resistance syndrome. The more common is a say interference, actually. A say interference is more common than the trauma. And also, a genetic testing, not as a first option in any endocrinic disorder. Before go to the genetic testing, you must do uh, another modality to differentiate between the trauma and the resistance thyroid syndrome. Don't go to genetic testing as the first choice in this scenario and i i, I will uh, cover it actually in um, this slide uh, uh, actually i i put it in the previous presentation but we may uh, move it rapidly this one Here in the, this is from the uh, journal paper about bit falls in the measurement and interpretation of steroid function test. And in this situation, when you see a disconcordant steroid function test, disconcordant means what? A TSH and a steroid hormone is elevated with or 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 suppressed with non. Uh, ordinary TSH. TSH, thyroid hormone is elevated with normal or elevated TSH. In this situation, we you need to reevaluate clinical history. You need, need to reassess the thyroid status, decide which thyroid function test is the most likely to be disconcordant, and exclude the assay interference. Before investigate of the rare genetic and acquired disorder, we should in exclude in a say interference. This is very important uh, topic.
you need to repeat thyroid function test in another lab. Okay. So in this case, you need to consider assay interference. And as I mentioned by at all, the possibility of the assay interference needs to be considered whenever there is a discrepancy between a clinical fission and biochemical result. Assay interference can be due to the macro TSA, heterophilic antibodies, thyroid hormone antibody, el biotin. Don't forget that el biotin will lead to decreased TSH with elevation of the thyroid hormone, which mimic hyperthyroidase. Macro TSH and the heterophil antibody can affect the TSH causing elevation of the TSH. The thyroid function test should be repeated from different laboratory using a different assay method. Another case, another case is I mean, in the yeah. previous case, if uh, say interference was ruled out, so it would be yes, in this enough. situation. If 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 a say interference is ruled out, the differential diagnosis should be by a yes, it's wrong, as there is no family history. Thyroid hormone resistant. What is the next option in this situation? Yes. Why is MRI? Hormone? What? It's not thyroid hormone, as there is no family history is mentioned. Even, even if uh, no family history, we cannot exclude a thyroid hormone resistance by family history. We need, we need to exclude the thyroid hormone okay. resistance by doing genetic testing. This is the most important. Okay. So right. to do genetic testing for thyroid hormone resistance or do to urgent MRI of the pituitary. MRI What? MRI, uh, yeah, genetic uh, testing. What about no, MRI? MRI? What? No rule for you? genetic testing. Sir, we will do different tests for thyroid resistance, like alpha, alpha subunit. Sub yes, I, I always use alpha subunit is, is more simple than this, but actually no need for urgent. If no urgent MRI, just mention MRI of the pituitary, I will choose it. But why urgent MRI? So urgent MRI is not a correct at all. Even if you suspect this is a TSHOMA, don't choose urgent MRI because no need for urgent. Why to do urgent? Mm -hmm. So don't forget in the exam, they ask about these words like this. Urgent word excludes this option. Even if MRI of the pituitary is the correct one. So don't forget to pick up words like this so in this situation if they mention that steroid as a say interference is excluded in this situation i will choose genetic testing for steroid hormone because an urgent mri is not a correct one if they uh, another option alpha subunit i will choose alpha subunit before genetic and yes, before genetic, yes, before genetic testing. And actually, this uh, we will discover in the second, uh, next presentation. And if you see right. this, I, I will mention this because this is actually is a very important thyroid hormone resistance syndrome. This is how to differentiate between the RTH and the TSHOMA. The family history presenting the RTH and absent the alpha subunit is very important and it is the most sensitive test to identify is a tumor and mri pituitary is also important but don't forget that adrenal pituitary in syndetaloma may be presented and the tsh response to trh of course this is a very important because in the is a tumor plant response and increase with the rth and this is a specific test and also another test, T3 suppression test. And I mentioned actually this is the uh, clinical laboratory and genetic confirmation. Genetic confirmation is the last one. And in the previous session, I mentioned that if alpha subunit is elevated, we should investigate for tissue If alpha subunit is normal, we should do testing before genetic genetic testing genetic testing usually the last option to choose clear sir
Okay. In this case, uh, which one of the following condition is associated with decreased TG level? D. D, cyrotoxicosis factitiata. Okay. What about the grave disease, hyperthyroidism, subacute, untreated differential thyroid cancer? All of them, all of the thyroid disorder oh. will lead to increase the TG. So, no rule to, uh, to order a TG in any, in any condition of thyroid disorder, except in two situations. And in another one, which one? Cancer. In follow up of differentiated thyroid carcinoma. Differentiated thyroid carcinoma. And in this situation, you should do anti TG with it in the same, from the same sample. Because in our clinical practice, we, we see a lot of malpractice of ordering a TG in a patient with thyroid nodule. Why uh, to order TG in a thyroid nodule? It mostly will be elevated. Even if normal, what is the significance of TG? Another question? LA. LA. A. Yes, this is uh, they mentioned that radio iodine uptake scan generally reduce uptake of iodine one, two, three. What is the half life of this iodine? One week. What? No, I think I think hours were thirteen hours. Hours, yes. Thirteen hours. Yes, 13 hours. What about the technician? Six hours. Six what hours. about radio, uh, radio ID? One, uh, how did it say twice? One week. Five days, one week. Ten days. One, two, three, uh, 24 to, to, to 48 hours. Eight days. Eight days. Okay. So the query cyrodytis, query cyrodytis leading to low uptake, reduced uptake. A grave disease like this. This is, what is the diagnosis of this? This is a toxic nodule. Toxic adenoma, toxic reduce. This is a toxic. Yes. So this is a toxic, toxic adenoma. Um, do we need uh, to do fine needle aspiration biopsy in the toxic nodule? No. 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 Because the risk of malignancy is very low. Mm -hmm. Not zero percent actually. It is very very low. So no need to do fine needle aspiration biopsy. What What is the treatment of toxic nodule? Permanent treatment, surgery or radioactive ID ablation. Yes. Or radioactive ID ablation. Yes. And actually, in the exam, they ask about the question: risk of hypothyroidism after radioactive ID ablation for for this for a situation like this. And they may ask about the question: a reduction of thyroid nodule after radioactive ID. Uh, what is the percentage of reduction? And this actually is very important a question, and we will cover it uh, with uh, the topic. Yes, uh, reduction of the nodule, fifty percent reduction of the nodule. Yes, Doctor Omar, and this is actually a previous exam. Question. Uh, Doctor Khaled Wafig, if it TG elevated. Markedly impatient with thyroid nodule, does it raise the possibility of, to be malignant? No. A TG has no role for diagnosis of malignancy. It is just a tumor marker to follow up. Uh, Dr. Taqaddam Madani, if TG and the anti-TG are elevated, what is the, what, what indicate? Nothing. The anti-TG, just a marker for autoimmune thyroid disorder. No, no, no more. 
But in the case of differentiated thyroid carcinoma follow up, if it TG is elevated and the anti TG is elevated, so it mostly indicates a recurrence of the tumor. If it TG is elevated, actually, the anti TG is very important in the follow up of patient with differentiated thyroid carcinoma because the anti TG, if it is positive, if it is elevated with suppressed TG. In this situation, we cannot conclude that the suppressed TG due to no recurrence. It may be recurrent of thyroid malignancy, and TG is low because there is interference with the anti-TG. But if the TG is elevated, in this situation, you must suspect tumor recurrence, differential thyroid carcinoma recurrence. If the anti-TG is elevated, if you do it since six weeks six months and elevated more than the previous result you must suspect the recurrence so we do the whole body scan sir in this case yes 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 of course it's a, a, a neck ultrasonography is a, the first choice and you search for a recurrence by whole body scan because it may be a result of metastatic thyroid carcinoma Okay. Uh, how long a uh, time, Dr. Held, I think how long time it is to, to, to uh, improve in the patient with hyperthyroidase? Because this is a, need a very, very, very long duration and actually in some cases need uh, six months or more. Because a recovery of suppression of thyroid, of, of hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis needs a very long duration. Also, a recovery of uh, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis due to the second uh, adrenal insufficiency needs a very long duration. And actually, Dr. Fadi Azma has mentioned maybe years. Actually, I see some of cases uh, TSH suppressed for very, very long duration. And in this situation, you don't suspect the patient will be remit. In this situation, once you stop the anti drug, your patient will relapse. A grave disease will relapse. And in this situation, you need to uh, go to the surgery or radioactive ID or a small dose, a long duration with a small dose of anti medication. So it may need a very long duration. But in most cases, the recovery of TSH will be within a few months. Yes, a reduction of uh, anti steroid medications usually you reduce these uh, drugs according to the level of the T3 and T4, not the TSH. Once the TSH and the uh, once the T4 and the TSH will be lower normal, you must reduce steroid uh, anti steroid drugs, carbamazole or propylsyracil or misimazole. And actually, this is uh, in the next uh, presentation, inshallah, uh, not today. How long is TSH separation in the post thyroid cancer and how size the time of separation? Actually, according to the risk stratification, Dr. Fatih, of the patient. Uh, for example, in the low risk uh, patient of recurrence, uh, no, no, no need for separation. If uh, the age is less than 45 and the thyroid needle is low and the risk of recurrence is uh, low, uh, in this situation, the recommendation is just to give a replacement therapy, not suppressive, suppressive therapy. But if the uh, recurrence is elevated, in this, uh, you need to suppress TSH forever. A lifelong below 0.1, not for all patients, uh, Dr. Mahawish, according to the risk stratification of the patient, and inshallah, we will cover it in the session of the thyroid uh, cancer. So, a risk stratification of the patient is very important in uh, suppressive therapy. Is it suppressive therapy or replacement therapy according to the risk stratification? For high risk of recurrence, you need to suppress it, TSH less than 0.1 for life. But in the low risk patient, no need for separation. You 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 can uh, your target of TSH is uh, between 0 0.1 uh, to 0.5, and in some uh, conditions, the lower half of the normal. Uh, so I will go to back biochemical destruction response. Uh, um, I don't know. Um, 
I don't understand your question, Dr. Sene. No, this is not a question. Yes. This is not a question. How do you apply the rest of response? Yes. So, so my summary for the first session, inshallah, and after this summary, I will go to solve some question from uh, the program. So, uh, thyroid hormone synthesis is very important. The ideal the trapping, the coupling, the conjugate, the coupling. This is the conjugation of joint together, and the release of thyroid hormone, and and uh, in which. Uh, Carbimazole uh, inhibit TBO, so carbimazole inhibit iodination and coupling. And the sense of syroglobulin, because syroglobulin is mainly uh, synthesized uh, with uh, thyroid peroxidase uh, enzyme. And this is also a very important uh, slide. The factors that increase the TBG and leading to increase the total thyroid hormone, and the factors that decrease the TBG and leading to decrease the total thyroid hormone, not the free thyroid hormone. Don't forget that tamoxifen, estrogen, lead to increase the TBG, the androgen, the caution, chronic liver disease, systemic illness, the acromegaly active acromegaly or uh, enzyme, in, enzyme, enzyme inducer, lead to decrease the TBG. And D1, D2, D3, the adrenaline enzyme is very important. It's tissue and responsible for what? D1 and D2 lead to increase T3. Uh, D1 presented in the liver and kidney and thyroid and muscle. D2 in the neuron mainly and D3 in the placenta leading to increase the reverse T3. And this is very important. And this is the influence of the drug on the thyroid hormone. Don't forget that the glucocorticoid and the dopamine and the phenotoin the uh, octreotide, both of all of this lead to decrease the TSH secretion. Don't forget that the salicylate leading to T4 and T3 binding and decrease in the binding of the T4 and the T3 and also the furosemide. Uh, and don't forget that the heparin will affect the free thyroid hormone T3 and T4 will be lead to falsely elevation of the free thyroid hormone with normal TSH, mimic TSH and resistance to thyroid hormone, and also carbamazepine, phenytoin, non steroid anti-inflammatory drug, mimic central hypothyroidism, leading to low thyroid hormone with normal TSH. And the thyroid hormone resistance is very important topic in the exam. Don't forget that the patient present mainly by goiter, short stature, hyperactivity, attention deficit, and learning disability. And don't forget that thyroid hormone beta gene defect, this is very important, and no treatment is required. How to differentiate between resistance, uh, re resistance to thyroid hormone and the choma? And actually, we, we cover it. The alpha subunit is very important. A response to TSH, response to TRH, when a plant responds to TSH, no change in the TSH, and TSH will be increased with resistance to thyroid hormone. T3, if we inject T3, TSH will not change in TSH and will be decreased as normal in the resistance to thyroid hormone. And don't forget, with injection of octreotide, 80% and 95% reduction of the TSH in the TSH and no reduction in the resistance to thyroid hormone. So an octreotide can be used for, rend for rendering the patient of TSH to be thyroid before surgery because the surgery is the method of choice. This is the only drugs and it's a how a thyroid function is stage. And this is very important. In uh, 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 the recent use of the amiodarone, it is such will be upper normal. But it is three will be low normal and this I actually I, I cover it uh, by some illustration in the uh, session of the amiodarone and the free T4 will be elevated mildly. Don't forget the biotin mimic primary hyperthyroidism, the same as TSH is low with elevated thyroid hormone, but the patient is asymptomatic. And also the patient history of biotin intake as a supplementation. And this is how to assess uh, any case of thyroid causes. Thyroid syntegraphy, this is a grave disease, this is a toxic multinodular goiter, this is a toxic adenoma, and this is a low A thyrotoxicosis. Don't forget the U system, which is a bridge thyroid association classification 
فور فور الترا سونوجرافيك ريسك باتل البيلاين فيتشر بيرفر ايج شيل كلاسيفيكيشن بيرفر فاسكولارتي دونت فورجيت بيرفر فاسكولارتي لان انترا نيدر فاسكولارتي از ا ماليجنت فيتشر الماليجنت فيتشر اند سسبيشس فيتشر اللوبيوليتد اوت لاين مايكرو كلاسيفيكيشن ذيس از فيري امبورتنت تولر ذان واي اسوشيتد سسبيشس لينف نود ديستيرب بيرفر كلاسيفيكيشن And don't forget that the size system U1 and U2 no need for follow up required except if there is a suspicious feature or risk factor for thyroid cancer. And U2, U3 to U5 need to do fine needle aspiration biopsy. And don't forget that Psi1 is non diagnostic repeat fine needle aspiration biopsy. 1C, Psi1C says you correlate with the clinical and ultrasonographic finding. But the pure cystic, this is a benign nodule. Psi 2, this is a non neoplastic, and you need to repeat fine needle aspiration biopsy within two, two, three to six uh, months if there is a suspicious feature. Psi 3A, a typical repeat. Psi 3A, follicular hemicyrodectomy, risk of malignancy 10 to 40. Psi 4, suspicious of malignancy, diagnostic hemicyrodectomy because the risk of malignancy is about 70%. Type 5 diagnosis of malignancy, surgical excision if differentiated thyroid cancer, radiotherapy and chemotherapy for anaplastic thyroid cancer. And this is the referral. Don't forget that stridor should be referred immediately for a consultant. Urgent referral within two weeks if unexplained hoarseness, cervical lymph node, child, thyroid nodule in child, rapidly enlarging over weeks, belly thyroid mess. Non-urgent referral if abnormal thyroid function test, sudden onset of the pain in the thyroid lung, lump, a gradual enlarging over months. Don't forget that managing primary care thyroid lump or goiter, which remain unchanged for a long duration, non-bulbable thyroid nodule less than one centimeter incidentally detected without, without any suspicious feature. So in this session, uh, we discover a simple anatomy, physiology, TBG, diagenesis enzyme, Thyroid hormone resistant drugs that affect the thyroid, the FDH, thyroid scan and the new classification and finding the aspiration cytology and the non-thyroidal illness. And this is my uh, uh, previous uh, presentation uh, which I uploaded uh, at the website and the WhatsApp group, the resistant to thyroid hormone and when thyroid lab slides. This is uh, uh, about Thyroid hormone interference, and actually, I uh, cover the biotin, the macro TSH, and the uh, heterophil antibody. If anyone has some conflicting points, please send them through the WhatsApp, and I will cover it in the next presentation. And if you have any remarks about how this course runs in the next session, please let me know. And uh, are you ready to the exam? So, I will cover some questions from my program. Uh, and don't forget, I will upload the survey about the fair and the suitable fees for the thyroid session. But actually, it is not 10 sessions for the thyroid. It will be about uh, at least uh, 14 sessions for the thyroid, the same fees with extra previous sessions. And I will upload uh, about 20 MCQ like exam style questions. Uh, to be answered and actually uh, after answering any question you will get the correct answer after this uh, and this is the last session in my session today but i will cover some questions in about seven minutes if anyone want to answer the question There you are. So, which of the following is suggestive of suspicious nature of histology or radiology of the thyroid nodule? Which one? We need interactive. Yes, micro calcification is a suspicious feature. Yes. What is the likely mechanism involved in thyroid hormone resistance? 
beta chain mutation so beta chain mutation is the is, is the abnormality mechanism in the thyroid hormone resistance beta actually because in alpha alpha chain mutation 35 year old lady present with 1.5 centimeter nodule a fine needle aspiration cytology shows size 2 what should be the most appropriate step in the management Repeat fine needle aspiration sure Reassure. Uh, both, both answer reassurance and discharge is correct. Repeat any three to six months is correct. Three, six months, yes. Both answers are correct. But actually, if they uh, leave a question like this, I will choose repeat. But if they mention no malignant feature in the sonar, I will choose reassurance and discharge. Yes. So, reassurance and discharge is right. If they mention only no malignant feature in the scenario, if they didn't mention any remarks about the feature, I will choose repeat by needle aspiration in uh, three to six months according to the Oxford handbook. So this is a very important hint and the question. What is the likely uh, physiological mechanism involved in a critically unwell patient leading to sick eusyroid state? What is the likely physiological mechanism? What? Two and a decrease, the two and the three. The increase in uh, three DID type, type three. Uh, which answer? Uh, type three, three? Increase, I think. Increase in T3. First of all, it is five or three dash, the Adonis. It's five. It is five dash. So option A, option D is not correct. Wrong. So B or C, decrease in type one or increase in type three? Decrease in type one. Decrease one. in type, type one. one. Yes. Decrease in type one. So this then is the correct one. Decrease in type one. one. This is the correct answer. Because in a study we are in, there is a question like this, but no decrease in type one. They mentioned increase in type one, which is not correct. In this situation, if there is increase in type one and increase in type three, I will choose increase in type three. But if there is decrease in type one, I will choose it. What is the uh, this is the question in the uh, study BRN, the, uh, the same question, but the options are different. Increase in five dash the IDNS type one or increase in type three. No, increase in type three. You've got, in this situation, increase, increase in type, in type three. three. So this is a big question in study BRN. This is from the uh, uh, recent uh, updated uh, website they uh, change the options so and this is increase decrease in type one decrease in type one but in this question increase in type three okay and another question tsh controls the thyroid cell growth and the hormone senses by binding of specific tsh receptor which one of the following is the correct script of tsh Receptor. Trans transmembrane. Yes. Transmembrane. It is a transmembrane G-protein coupled receptor. Okay. What about steroid hormone receptors? Nuclear. 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 Nuclear receptor. Yes. But it is such hormone receptor. It is a transmembrane G-protein coupled receptor. Uh, oh, I will go to the question. Insufficient sample, non-diagnostic, inadequate. Which one? Taiwan. Taiwan. Yes. Taiwan. Taiwan. What is the action for Taiwan? Repeat immediately. Repeat immediately under ultrasonographic guide. Okay. This is another question. Which of the following test is most useful in assessment of air flow obstruction due to the goiter? Flow, flow volume, volume care. Flow volume care for CT. Flow volume care. Volume 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 volume. Volume. Okay. 
what is the what is the risk of malignancy is the nodule show shown below this is a patient presented with PET scan and find a nodule 2.2 what is the risk of malignancy PET scan means 70% 70 PET scan we mentioned it is in the Oxford handbook they mentioned 20%. So it is a 20 to 35%. So the correct answer here is 35%. This is a question. Which of the following associate with increased TBG? Tamoxifen. Yes, tamoxifen. And this is the last question, actually, because the Zoom will. Uh, Severe burning. Repeat after recovery. After recovery. Repeat after recovery. Yes, Dr. Abdurrahman, in the non thyroidal illness, decrease D1. Yes, it is a decrease D1. Increase D3. But it is a decrease D1. Yes, you are correct. And uh, we mentioned it. That's it. So, in this situation, the patient presents with cardiac SH is low, normal, low. 34 is elevated. What is the most abnormal next step? Uh, 